So last week, Call of Duty Warzone came out, which is a free-to-play Battle Royale game. To be honest, I don't really give a shit about Battle Royale or Call of Duty in the year 2020. The last time I really gave a shit about Call of Duty, like I actually cared, I was a freshman in high school when Black Ops 2 came out, and that game was amazing, but after that, really, Call of Duty lost its magic. And then Battle Royale, I mean, that, that genre has been done to death at this point. I am sick and tired of the constant Battle Royale releases, all these companies trying to cash in on the hype. I hate it. I hate Battle Royale. Uh, it's just so fucking boring. You're just sitting there half the time, waiting for something to happen, and if you do go out there in the middle of the map, and you do try to kill a whole, like, you're gonna get sniped, and it's just, ugh, it's so frustrating. You spend all this time collecting all this stuff, only for it to just, for you to just get shot, and someone takes your shit, and you're dead. And it, it just feels so unsatisfying. That's the thing I have with Battle Royale. Like, when Fortnite first came out, I'm like, oh, this is cool, but after a little while, I got really bored with it, and, you know, it's just not my thing, okay? You like Battle Royale, that's fine. I'm not gonna trash people who play it or anything. I I'm just saying, I hate Battle Royale, I hate Call of Duty, I really don't care about Call of Duty Warzone, but what I do care about is another interesting part of what happened when Warzone came out. Remember, when Warzone was released, it was announced that you do not need PlayStation Plus in order to play that game because it's a free-to-play game. You don't need PlayStation Plus, but if you're an Xbox guy, you need Xbox Live Gold. Let me say something. It makes absolutely no sense for Xbox Live Gold to be a thing in the year 2020, okay? You could have made the case back in the day when you had the original Xbox and even the 360 that Microsoft by far had the best online infrastructure in the entire gaming industry and it was worth paying a premium every month or every year, however you do it. It was worth the money because you got so much out of it, but that's really not the case anymore. The gaming landscape has changed significantly since Xbox Live was first launched back in 2002. I would argue that Xbox Live was easily far better than PlayStation Network was in the seventh generation, but this current generation, I really don't see much of a difference. I mean, both of those networks have constant outages at the most inconvenient of times when this whole corona shit started breaking out. The one time where it's actually socially acceptable to sit and play video games all day because there's nothing else to do. The bars are closed, the restaurants are closed, schools are closed, everything is fucking shut down, right? So the one time that is like the best time to just sit back and play Xbox, the network is offline. So really, you're paying $60 a year. Let's say you own the console for five years. That means over five years, you're paying $300 just for the privilege of playing games online because it certainly ain't for a premium experience, the best online experience you can imagine because really this shit ain't much better than what, what we got on PlayStation. Sony has awful infrastructure for their online network. I mean, always going offline, all, it's just shitty. But this generation, has the Xbox really been better? Weird, I don't seem to have this problem on Steam and I don't pay a goddamn cent to play games online on PC. And we have all the features on PC that you have on console, whether it's cross game chat, whether it's free games every month, all of that shit you can get for free. There's no paywall to play your games online. And what I find fucking hilarious is that Xbox Live is on PC. You can play, you can use Xbox Live, you can use cross game chat with your friends, you could do everything on Xbox Live. That entire network is on Windows. It's on PC. And guess what? If you play games on Xbox Live, whether it's Halo or any other Xbox exclusive, you could play those games all on PC. Not only can you play those games on PC, but you can also play those games online without paying anything. So essentially, PC gamers get Xbox Live Gold for free, while Microsoft continues to punish people for buying their console and supporting them, while people on PC get all of that for free. I would love to see how Microsoft is able to justify this 
heading into the next generation, especially since they're making a huge push to kind of integrate PC and console gaming into one with their Xbox brand. That's pretty much what they're trying to do. But it's there's a disparity. If you have the console, Microsoft punishes you by having a $60 annual fee to play your games online, but on PC, you pay nothing. How is that fair? Now, don't get me wrong. I am not saying that, oh, PC gamers, they should have to pay $60 a year because we ain't gonna pay that shit. It's just not gonna happen. But I also think that console gamers are starting to see what's going on here, especially since they're trying to play games and at the most inconvenient times, the networks just shut down. So like, wait a minute, what the hell am I paying for? Why am I paying for this when it's not even a good network? It's not a reliable network. While there are other platforms that literally have the same exact games and you can play online for free. So I think if Microsoft has any plans on keeping things the way they are heading into the next generation with the Series X, I think it's going to blow up completely in their face. I think what's very likely to happen is that Microsoft says, okay, you don't have to pay $60 a year to play your games online, but if you want to keep all those games that you got over the years and you want to keep playing them, you got to keep paying for Xbox Live Gold. I think that's how they'll get you, because after all these years, I mean, how many people have so many games in their library that they got from Games with Gold, right? The two free games every month. So I think that's how they get you to keep paying. And then Xbox Game Pass is another thing. So maybe they'll, they'll, they'll think, okay, maybe it's time to stop doing this, to stop forcing people to pay for such a basic feature like playing online multiplayer. Because if they're really pushing to, to cut into the PC gaming market while still trying to have these archaic policies of paid online on the console while not doing that on PC, it, it's not going to work. But in general, the year 2020, it's, it's an outrage that th this still exists. Not, not just on Xbox, but on PlayStation and Nintendo. Those companies charge you to play games online because they know you're a fool and you're going to pay them. But I think that's going to start to change very soon. I honestly believe that, that people are going to rise up and say, hey, no, we're not going to have this anymore. And if Microsoft really wants to be competitive and get people to get into their console over Sony, that would be a good way to do it. Say, hey, we're free while Sony is forcing you to pay $60 a year. Literally, they need to use the same strategy Sony did when Microsoft did the whole thing with the used games back in 2013, and Sony was like, hey, you want to play used games? Buy our console. They can literally do the same exact thing with paid online, and I think that would be really good for them. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all later. Bye.